wait, wait, real quick. Side note: Can we? What words can we not say on the podcast? Can we cuss? Can I say like "bitch," "fuck," like what? I'm gonna what bleep out a lot of words. Um, okay. I, yeah, I wanna. I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, I'm not sure. I don't know how. Like, what? what how far? How far are we going? <laughs> I did put the podcast as explicit, so if that helps. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Let's, I don't yeah, think I'll, just, I don't, I'll just be myself, and you I'll can be honest. I don't want to reach children in my audience. That's not what I want to do. <laughs> I'm not yeah, here for no children. thanks. <laughs> I'm gonna put explicit, but I'll also like bleep out if anything is like really aggressive. You for, know, for, for the girls and the gays. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's what this podcast is for. <laughs> the girls and the gays of Disney. Yeah. Cam, it's so good to see you. And it's our first episode. <laughs> our first episode. I know. Uh, it's it's hard to say how much we love Disney. I think we both have uh, an, uh, just a, just a, I don't know, a long history, both good and bad. Oh, yeah. I would say. For myself, it's good and bad. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, Disney is just like nostalgic. I used to own all the movies on VHS. I had them all lined up on my little VHS bookshelf. I used to go to Disneyland every year with my family, sometimes twice a year. You know, even as I got into high school, even after high school, it's just like a family tradition. So it's just like Disney had a big place in my childhood oh, and damn. still has a big and place in And you're from in California now. too, so like it was it was like a decent trip to get down to Disneyland. It was like a seven hour trip. So sometimes like Fridays, like my mom would get off work maybe a little early and we would just drive straight to Anaheim and then just check in our hotel, relax, and then wake up first thing Saturday morning and go to Disneyland and then drive home on Sunday. It, it was like a mission, but it was so much fun. That is insane. That's wild. I, um, being on the East coast, you know, we have Disney world, which is the closest Disney thing to us. So I think my most anticipated like Disney visits are when we get to when we got to go to the mall and we <laughs> went to the Disney store. The oh mall. my god! <laughs> uh, they don't have those anymore, do they? I think they're all gone, aren't they? I, I assume most of them are gone because you know we used to just go in there and and never buy anything because <laughs> <laughs> everything was so expensive. My mom was like, "Oh, we'll just go to Disney World someday," and we went. We went to Disney World. I went one time when I was younger, um, and that. That trip was insane. I remember it, but I also remember just, like, how much I hate the heat. It's not for me. The heat is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not just the heat. Florida is also, like, humid. It's very humid. Well, I went during the summer, and it was super humid. Yeah. It's like swamp-ass territory. Yeah, swamp, literally. You gotta watch out for alligators. That, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't believe we're starting this podcast, because I'm... One, for one thing, I love a good podcast, but I also love a good drink. And today my drink is <clears throat> this bottle of rum that I found on the floor. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so I'm going to take a shot from this. Okay. Yeah, today we're just going to trudge into our, our childhood and kind of review the Disney film that basically started it all, right? It's it's what it's known for. It's, it's Not it's, basically, it did start it all. It's literally the <laughs> first full-length, traditionally animated feature film and the first Disney animated feature film. Definitely going to be talking about Snow White and the Seven Dwarves today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Okay, before we start, I just read about the live-action reboot that... There's not going to be dwarves in it. <gasps> it's just called Snow White because Peter Dinklage was upset that they're going to have dwarves in the movie. And he went on Twitter. He made a comment. I just found this out. Like, he made a comment. And he was like, I can't believe in this day and age we have a bunch of dwarves living in a cave on a movie. Who's doing this? I guess this is one of those difficult moments because separating reality from fantasy plays into the socio-political aspect of life, you know? I mean, especially when when humanoid fantasy creatures are represented and the term uh, that's used to represent those creatures plagues an entire group. It, it gets messy. 
I mean, people can turn any term into a word that subjugates an entire community. And I totally get why Peter Dinklage would be upset about that. You know, but it's interesting because I, I feel like where we are now in 2022, uh, I'm thinking of something in particular like Lord of the Rings. I'm sure there would have been a way to include uh, the fantasy creature of the dwarf into Snow White without portraying dwarfs as a caricature of a person with dwarfism. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and like, so obviously I'm not a person with dwarfism, so I, I can't speak on behalf of those people with dwarfism, but like, he's saying, oh, we're really out here. He, like, in his Twitter, in his tweet, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said, we're really out here, you know, expanding on stereotypes of dwarves and they're living in some backwoods cave, like, really, Disney? I'm like, Dude, no one in this day and age, at least who is educated, believes that dwarves actually live in a cave and are mining for ore. Like, no one believes that, dude. Like, what? No. And, I'm like, right? Like. Wait, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. So Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Okay. Do you do you know do you know which year this movie came out? Yes. Pop quiz. Wait. Wait, we're. What, what I'm year? about to do the synopsis. I know what year it came out. Oh, I know. <laughs> okay, okay, year okay, go it ahead. Came out. Well, that's not even. That's not even like <laughs> pop quiz. Oh, we'll get to pop quizzes in a second. Okay, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves is the 1937 American animated musical fantasy film produced by Walt Disney and RKO Radio Pictures. Uh, RKO is no longer with us. May they rest. And it's based on the 1812 German fairy tale by the Brothers Grimm. It's the first full-length traditionally animated feature film and the first Disney animated feature film in history. In history. It is iconic. This is the movie that started it all. <laughs> Snow White was nominated for Best Musical Score at the Academy Awards in 1938. And the next year... Producer Walt Disney was awarded with an honorary Oscar for the film because at this time there was no award at the Oscars for animation. And the awards were presented to Disney by Shirley Temple, who is Animal Crackers in my soup. She's just a little she's a little Love nugget. Her. She's a little nugget of so many things. Although Snow White may seem pretty scary with its poison apple and cackling witch and spooky forest, the original story was even scarier. And, and in it, the evil queen tries to poison Snow White three times. <laughs> Dang, she kind of sucks at poisoning people. <laughs> She's not very good at her job. I know. Like, girl, like, calm down. Uh, Jesus. How did she do it? Was it three different poison apples? At one point in the book, she even eats some of Snow White's organs, and, and she thinks she's uh, oh, Jesus. She thinks she's she's been killed, and really, it's like a pig. Um, we'll get we'll get to more on uh, the Brothers Grimm fairy tale. <laughs> oh my god! Oh yeah, that's like in the movie. The songs in Snow White of the Seven Doors were composed by Frank Churchill and Larry Morey, iconic composers to the Disney franchise. Um, some of those songs include the infamous "Hi Ho." Uh, someday my prince will come, and of oh. course, whistle while you work, which is ingrained in my memory as just annoying. It's so annoying. It is a very annoying song. <laughs> I really hate whistle while you work. No, it's annoying in the sense that it gets stuck in your head very easily. Yeah, that's what it is. It's one of those songs where like they try to get you yeah. to work. <laughs> by having fun right i'm like no thanks you capitalist pig i'm not gonna yeah. sing a song while i'm working it's not gonna make it more fun whistling while working is still working now you're giving me another job <laughs> <laughs> snow white had many influences across the board of classic film because it was the first full-length animated feature it had to go back into the archives for silent films uh, to make some kind of a comparison to but you want to know what's really interesting? When they were looking at um, influences for the film, they weren't taking it from <laughs> classic romantic silent films. They went to films like Nosferatu from 1922 <laughs> oh and The Cabinet gosh. of Dr. Caligari, which I had to watch in my film studies class, and that film literally gave me it. nightmares. Um, no wonder it's yeah, so scary. They, they were terrifying. Some scenes are very scary. I remember watching this as a kid. I'm like, this is a little creepy. <laughs> this is 
is crazy. It's it's a lot. Um, <laughs> I mean, for the time, <laughs> for the time, it was making history. Nothing had ever been done like this before. This is very true, and a lot of movies are, for its time, very important and very vital to history. Also, fun fact about this movie: it is one of the first twenty-five films for preservation in the National Film Registry. You know, like. The Library of Congress, they always choose films that they think are like culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. This is one of the first 25 films chosen for that, which just shows how high, like historic this movie really is. And I'm sure when you watch it now, people are just like, oh, it's, you know, it's not that great. The animation looks old. But this came out in 1937. Like, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, of course, like when things first start out, they're never that great. But when you first experience something, you're just kind of like, wow, this is amazing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would not have wanted to be alive in the 1930s, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me neither. Not a good time but for queer to... people. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> or, or brown people. people. Or oh, yeah. people <laughs> of color, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's... <laughs> or women. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not a time period yeah. I want to go to. No. No, people were going out like in droves to see this movie when it first came out. Before this movie came out, Walt was doing, like, black and white movies, and he was doing movies with sound. Like, Steamboat Willie, I believe, was, like, the first, like, black and white movie that had, like, sound attached to yeah. it. But there was no dialogue. It wasn't, like, a first full-length yeah. film. Like, this was, like, the first full-length, like, cel-shaded animated movie. It was big. Yeah, and it, it is... <laughs> I mean, what is it? Like, adjusted for inflation, this movie made, like... Almost two billion dollars <laughs> adjusted for inflation. That's that is it still beats out films like Frozen and Finding Nemo and even The Lion King, which is insane to think about because this movie was just so, so far ahead of its time. The amount of work that goes mm -hmm. into classic styles right. of of animation. I don't think a lot of people recognize that today. This is hand drawn animation. Yeah. Like, they're not, even Disney's not doing, like, hand animated movies anymore. Their last animated movie was, what, Princess and the Frog, right? Oh! Oh, I, I was, I was going to... Right? I was going to test you on that one. See <laughs> yeah, that was. was the last uh, animated movie. And it wasn't that great, to be mm -hmm. honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll get okay. to Princess yeah, and the we'll, Frog. Yeah, we'll we we'll get, do that we one down the line. But it was just like, they're just doing completely <laughs> just CGI movies now. Which I it makes me kind of sad. Don't get me wrong, in... In the earlier stages of animation, you're creating a, a literal flip book to make sure that each cell is perfectly aligned with each other to make a full length animated feature. This is, you know, on par with people who like, I don't know why people in, enjoy doing this, but I'm glad that they do. Uh, people who make stop motion films, you know? Like, if you make claymation movies or those little Lego movies on YouTube, those 15-second those Lego movies probably took someone 17 hours to make. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that is wild. That's insane. Like, they have to draw every single frame. Like, that must take so long. Like, I can't even imagine. How do you even keep track of that? Like, the two, you compare, like, two pictures next to each other. They're going to look the same. You're like, this one's just a little <laughs> tiny different, you know? Because you're making, like, a picture book. Right? They're going to look very similar. Like, and how do you even you know keep what? track to of To be that? fair, I guess, like, to be really fair, um, you know, once you make an animation, Disney had, you know, the, the practice of using cells to create other characters down the line. And so, obviously, the template for a lot of Disney princes were, like, one template <laughs> they, they were they were the same guy with different hair color is that why they're all so generic <laughs> <laughs> they are very generic the earlier ones yeah they try to play it off with like oh no we had like these actors and these models like who was the model like average white guy 101 like <laughs> i know right they're you're just... here to tell me that prince florian is not the same guy as prince charming it's literally the same person but with different hair <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and to be fair, the prince in Snow White is in the movie for, like, what, three minutes? <laughs> like, he's not even in the movie that long. <laughs> and I'm actually really happy in the first few animated uh, classics. The prince isn't there for a long period of time. A lot of the classics, a lot of the older classics, like, focus on 
what the villain is mm-hmm. doing at the time. And I kind of appreciate that because, you know, like usually villain, usually the villain story is a lot more interesting. You know, everyone loves a bad villain. A hundred percent. And that's why, like, all the new live action films are first focusing on the villain's backstories. Because people are like, well, you know, why is this person so sadistic? And then you're just kind of like, well, you know, maybe they had a reason to be this way. Which is funny because they still haven't done a backstory on Grimhilde. Who? <laughs> Grimhilde. I, I can never pronounce this queen's name. Her Her... Who? Uh, it's German. Her name is not mentioned in the who's, film. Who's Grimhilda? Grimhilda. Grim, Grimhilda. Queen Grimhilda. Evil queen? Which <laughs> is our first ever... Uh, is our first ever Disney princess villain. You're talking, about, you're talking about the evil queen, right? Yes. Yes. They never refer to her by name. Okay. <laughs> um, who started the trend for evil stepmothers around the world. So, Cam, help me break down this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try to grasp what it means from the perspective of adulthood. <laughs> okay. So, queen, the evil queen who is known as the just the evil queen in the film. She We begin yeah, and open with her uh, checking out herself in the mirror, thinking she's looking extra fine. And the mirror's like, nah, girl, you, you're not that cute anymore. Sorry. Uh, you got your... Uh... Wait, wait, wait. No, you, you can't skip over the iconic line. She always says, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? And the mirror says, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, hold up, bitch. Uh, your your iron deficient yeah. stepdaughter outside is like <laughs> is super cute. Um, and Snow White, who is you know adorable, she is what she's actually what the youngest Disney princess. She's, How old is she exactly? According to the Disney Princess website, she is <laughs> of she is fourteen years old. Who 14? which is that's very young to be going through all this. Um, it was a different time in the nineteen thirties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because how old is the prince? That's what I want to know. How old is he? Because <laughs> I, if there's an age gap there, I got some questions, Disney. I, uh, uh, according to the Disney Princess website, he's sixteen. Um, that still does not make it any better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're both minors. That still does not make it any better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Yeah. That makes nothing better about this. Which is fine. You know, okay, hold on. Let's pull it back for a second. She's a young, cute little girl with a with a nice little bob. Designed after the iconic Betty Boop. Was she? I can see the similarities. Yeah. Yeah. By the end of the twenties, the thirties. The um that that classic figure that that Betty Boop look was, you know, just so popular. Um it was something that was you know, mm-hmm. imitated in a lot of cartoons. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, Betty Boop was based on a black woman. So I, I just find it really funny that, like, <laughs> Snow White, the whitest white woman of all, is based on a black woman. Right, the whitest the whitest girl who ever lived. <laughs> She's looking less pin-up, of course. She's looking more, like, demure and calm. Uh, so the queen's like, all right, I can't have I can't have this bitch be looking better than me. And so she sends a huntsman a huntsman after Snow White, and the huntsman's like, I'm gonna take you to the woods and we'll like go pick some flowers and shit. And then and then the huntsman's like, You're too cute and adorable. I don't wanna kill you. Yeah, that seems very and then scary. Snow White He's like, Run, run, <laughs> run away and never look back. And I'm like, Jesus, you just met her. Like she has no idea who you are. You just tried to kill her, now you're telling her. We to get run. that iconic moment in the film where she takes at least a minute and a half <laughs> To like, She's like, what do I do? Look at him, look away, <laughs> look back at him, run backwards. She's gasping for air. She's throwing her arms up. She's running around and flailing around. And then she books it. She just runs into the woods. Which also leads into the iconic running through the forest scene, which is very scary if you've ever yeah. seen the scene. It is a very, there's like trees coming alive, creepy owls, like, these logs turn into alligators. Like, everything's trying to grab her. Like, it is very creepy. I was a kid watching this. I'm like, this is terrifying. It's very dark. Yeah. It's a scary those, scene. Those moments, those small, those small instances of, like, true fear 
that are like wrapped in in Disney films are actually what make I think personally are what make uh, Disney films so iconic because even if you're not going to remember um, you know those like really cute and and beautiful and blissful moments you're definitely going to have that imprint of like oh my fucking god <laughs> like oh god what am i what what is happening <laughs> what is what is There's happening like, yeah these trees are like groping her and like trying to rip her dress off i'm like what is going she is 14 trees what are you doing and she is she is trying her best <laughs> she's, she's trying her best <laughs> That's all she can do. You know, she's 14 years old. She's never been in this situation. And then, of course, she falls in the middle of the woods and she is just so sad. And then the animals are like, oh, you you cute girl, we're going to surround you. Meanwhile, I'm like, you know, the deers and stuff, the Lyme disease. I'm not I'm not about that. But, (laughs) you know, they they help her find this cute little abandoned cottage where she walks in. And this is where Peter Dinklage might get offended by this because she looks at this cottage and is like oh it must be for orphans Mm -hmm. and so like (laughs) they're orphans without a mother which girl what do you think an orphan is (laughs) also like (laughs) where are her parents because she is 14 years old running through a forest hanging out alone in a meadow where a giant huntsman can just come up and do whatever he wants to her where are her parents yeah, it's That's actually, what I want to know. It's really sad that we never got the opportunity to see how she interacts with her stepmother as her stepmother. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Like it we never we never see that interaction. We only see her interact with the stepmother as like the witch, which is you know, understandable, but like I would have loved right, to see like, how, like, the stepmother would probably carry herself around the woman that she wants to kill. Yeah, like, what if they had, like, teamed up, you know, be like, you're pretty, I'm pretty, <laughs> like, we can be pretty together and rule the country. Like, <laughs> You're pretty? They could have been a dynamic mother-daughter what duo. What in the mean girls are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, they were both pretty. They could have just, they, you know, they could have they could have worked it. They could have figured something out. <laughs> They didn't have to be enemies. Also, the Ooh. evil queen is like how old and she's getting jealous of a 14 year old. Like, grow up. <laughs> You're pretty. I'm pretty. Let's rule the country. That is, that's going to be part of our new merch line. So still, feel free to stick around for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty. You're pretty. Let's rule the country. It could be fucking Bad Girls Club. Bad Girls Country up in here. Let's just rule the house together. Um, so all the while, Snow White breaks into someone's house, uh, <laughs> who she has no idea who lives there, and just starts cleaning up. And I'm thinking, as an adult, <laughs> mm-hmm. why don't I have that? Why don't I have someone who wants to break in and clean up my house? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I, I just feel like if someone were to walk in and have that urge... That's a true friend. That's someone you want to keep around. <laughs> I wouldn't stop them. I'd be like, hey, I'm going to leave my door unlocked on Saturday if you feel like breaking in. <laughs> also, the window's open. <laughs> I'm going to be gone from this time to this time. And there's some Windex beside that open window if you just want to check it out. I don't know. Whatever you feel like doing. Right. I just bought a whole fresh roll of paper towels. They're under the sink. <laughs> Hope no one breaks in and cleans my house while I'm gone. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, that would be nice. <laughs> she is an extra kind of bold. But I, I just feel like when we're looking at this now, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things in this movie where we, you know, we can look at this and be like, hmm. This could have been resolved this way. You know what I mean? And one of the resolves here for me is like, she could have (laughs) waited (laughs) until the people got home. (laughs) She could have. (laughs) Yeah, not just walk in. Yeah. Here's a house. Let me just go in. Yeah, that is. (laughs) I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm mad that she broke in, but I'm not mad that she cleaned up. I don't know. I'm conflicted That's the thing. by Like, her. at the very least, like, you know, like, fucking Goldilocks, that bitch, she walks into a house, she eats their food, she breaks their sofa, she sleeps in their bed, she just, and then she leaves. She gets scared and she runs out of the house. At least Snow White was like, I'm going to come in, but I'm going to clean the house and, yeah. you know, do something nice to make up for it. <laughs> um, the dwarves. <laughs> okay, there's, there's Happy, 
Yeah, there's Happy, who's obviously Happy. Doc. I don't know why. Why is he? He's not a doctor. Why do they call him Doc? Like he has glasses. That's it. Like, do they even know what a doctor is? I don't even know. But there's um, Grumpy. Who, Grumpy's a bitch. <laughs> like watching this now, I'm like, he's so, he's so angry all the time. And I'm like, I know his. Grumpy is like an understatement, though. I'm like, I cannot live with someone like Grumpy. I'm like, no, it's not gonna work out. I yeah, that's. I feel like I'd be Grumpy. If, okay, I would be mad because I'm living in a house with, like, six other people who smell like feet and have the nerve to be like, let's whistle while we work. I would be the grumpy one because I'm not, I'm not dealing with this nonsense of being like, let's be happy while we pluck out diamonds in ish from, like, random mines. Especially for, like, no apparent reason. <laughs> they, we don't, what are they even doing with them? Where do they go? Where's the money going? Where's the money coming um, in? I think you can each afford your own room. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> With those Where boys. are they comfortable living like this? In this in this shack of a... I don't even know what it is. They call it a cottage, but I hate it's people who cottage. say cottage. Because it's just like, oh, a lovely little cottage is a cute way of saying, like, like an outhouse. It's so it's cottage core. It's... it's <laughs> It's a place with a hay. When I think of outhouse, I think of like a bathroom, <laughs> like, like an outhouse. Yeah, like that's, that's what, what I think, think of a cottage. <laughs> it's like a bathroom outdoors. So, wow. So their house is a shithole. That's All what right, you're saying. What else? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we said Doc. And there's uh, Grumpy, and then there's Sleepy. I feel like I'm sleepy all the time. He's just always sleepy, always <laughs> yawning, sleepy. just always wanting to take a nap. And I'm like, I I, I can get on board with that. And then there's a uh, sneezy who sneezes all the time, very obviously. I feel like we're missing one. Happy, did we say, grumpy, did we say dopey already? Huh? Happy, grumpy, doc, bashful. Oh, bashful! I always forget bashful because he's so bashful. <laughs> he's just the cute, shy one. Yeah, he's adorable. I uh, yeah I, mm, I yeah I think I feel most with with grumpy, living with people who live by their namesakes of like. One being perpetually in a state of like having allergies, that's a lot for me. Someone who's constantly sneezing around me. <laughs> yeah, like that's your whole personality. You got allergies? No, 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 no. That's too much. I'd be what, like, what else are you working with? <laughs> Doc, get him some antihistamines. Why is he doing this? Right? You're, why is your name Doc if you're not helping him? <laughs> <laughs> What are those glasses for? <laughs> oh, God. Okay, but I want to talk about Dopey. He's definitely the most fashionable. That green with the purple beanie looks really good. Also the youngest. He's like a... Is he the youngest? I mean, he's meant to represent someone who is... <laughs> I don't even know how to describe this. <laughs> like, you're trying to say this the most inoffensive way. Okay, for its time, yeah, Dopey is an offensive character. Because, like, I mean, for one, his name is Dopey. And I think at the time, a dope meant someone who was, like, impaired in the mind during yeah, that dopey time, Yeah, Dopey is right? meant to represent someone who is I could be, uh, yeah. some form of neurodivergent. Um, <laughs> yeah, someone who's not all there. And it, it, it... and that that's why I wanted to talk about him. I'm like, what is his deal like what it was disney trying to do here because i even watching it as a kid i'm like what what is he doing like what is what's what's his thing i think it's <laughs> it's interesting because disney used a lot of tropes of like playing around with someone who wasn't the brightest cookie in the bunch as like a form of comedic mm -hmm. relief you know this person always relied heavily on yeah and it worked he's definitely the most i think he's the most famous of the dwarfs everyone recognizes dopey he's definitely the most lovable yeah. he's the cutest I, I feel like everyone loves dopey i thought he was really interesting because dopey was also mute <laughs> like he didn't speak he didn't yeah, talk yeah that's he was mute um, he couldn't talk and i thought this was interesting and they never explained why he just was to me he mm, he kind of represented universal language you know, remember that this film came out during the late 30s. Uh, sound and color were only recently introduced to cinema. And so applying larger physicalities where necessary, it, 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 it creates language. You know, it creates movement and probably helped the animators a lot with, with more suitable uh, gesticulations. Those, you know, those melodramatic movements like Snow White flailing her arms around, running through the forest like she's, like she's fucking Diane Keating or something... Or even, you know, Bashful twisting his body and showing how shy he really is. You know, Dopey was, was that to the extreme. 
like in Comedia del Arte, uh, those exaggerated movements speak for a character and become their personality. So this is, um, this being so early in cinema, Dopey really allowed for silent film era viewers to transition to animated film with, you know, with greater slapstick comedy. That's probably why Charlie Chaplin liked this movie so much. I mean, it, it, this, <laughs> this is what cartoons are known for. They're known for, like, creating extreme variations of, of body bodily movements. Yeah, it totally, it definitely makes sense. Because, you know, for one, his, his name is Dopey, and he looks dopey. He's got big ears and a big nose. So there's, like, the physical aspect to it. You know, he looks funny. He's there to make you laugh. He's silly. He's, you know, not the brightest tool in the shed like so he you know he gets into a little bit of mishaps mm-hmm. he, he's there to make you laugh yeah. and he's and he definitely does that. yeah you know so like one of the fun facts i read actually about dopey is that disney was working on a prequel about dopey and the reason he lost his voice was because he witnessed his mother's death what the fuck <laughs> what the, but they what? yeah but they canceled it they canceled it there was going to be two prequels. There was a prequels like explaining how the dwarfs met and how the evil queen killed Snow White's dad and took the throne. And there was another one, too, about how Dopey lost his voice witnessing the death of his mother. Which, oh which also God. makes me think. I'm like, if I know, pretty dark, right? <laughs> no, not just pretty dark. That is insanely dark. What the hell? <laughs> so it's not like he couldn't. It's not like he was born mute. It's like he lost it over past trauma. Huh. Which also makes me think, so, like, does he have his own mother? And that means all the dwarves have their own mother, and they all just, like, came into, you know, cohabitating in one way or another? Well, I, I wouldn't... I, I, I wouldn't assume that the dwarves are, like, asexual. I don't think they just kind of <laughs> reproduce on their own, you know what I mean? No, I'm saying, like, do they all, like, each have their own mother? Like, I always assumed they were all related. Oh, or maybe, I don't know, I, maybe it's like, you know, how hobbits work. They just kind of, like, live in a shack together. <laughs> but, like, they all have their yeah. own family name. But, like, they all have, like, you know, like a Smurf. You know, like, <laughs> like their name is, their namesake is who they are personality-wise. Mm-hmm. But at, then again, like, how do you, like, when do you look at a baby and it's just like, that baby's angry. I'm going to name it Grumpy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 when do you name... Yeah. When do you name the dwarf? <laughs> like, do you just, like... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Like, they're mythical creatures. They could have their own mating rituals, their own birthing rituals. We don't know how they work. They could hatch out of eggs, for all we know. Who I would have... I mean, maybe. It's very possible. I'm <laughs> very fascinated to hear... We know nothing about dark them. story about dopey and losing his mom oh my god that is a yeah, next level trauma. So dark. that is <laughs> that is deep trauma i'm assuming it, i'm assuming it was the queen that probably killed her yeah i mean it is based on a pretty dark book i mean <laughs> the grim like i said the grim fairy tales are never yeah but i mean you know uh in the grim fairy tales they do a lot of things that are pretty intense um yeah, and, like, literally the whole part of the movie is, like, someone trying to kill her. Yeah, there, there's a lot of things that they've changed from the book. <laughs> I'm not going to go over the book. Uh, meanwhile, the dwarves are, like, out and about uh, hunting for, for jewels and stuff. hi ho In a mine that has, like, an assortment of gemstones, which is, you know, not reality. Yeah, what do they do with these? Like, they don't look very rich. <laughs> like, are they selling them? Are they eating them? Like... <laughs> Are they absorbing them anally? Where, like, what are they doing Where with do them? these gemstones go? Do they just <laughs> collect them and sleep on them like a dragon or something? I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, like, what are they doing? What's the point? How are you... Sust- like, look at your house. Well, they don't even have, like, a padlock or a security system. Because, honestly, if she could just waltz right in and start cleaning shit up... <laughs> I, I don't understand... Yeah, she could just take all the gemstones if yeah. she wanted. And so we get the we get the legendary hi ho song, which is you know end of a workday shift. We're not sure if these hi-ho. dwarves are unionized hi-ho. or anything because you know they just kind of leave after you're done whistling while you work. You you start the hi ho home, <laughs> <laughs> and they finally get home and they experience the Goldilocks effect, which is like someone's been in my house and cleaning. Um, yeah, here's where I have the problem. They find her in the bed and they're very curious and they're like, oh, 
And and she's just like, y'all are dirty and disgusting. You need to get clean so I can <laughs> make dinner. Right? Especially when you broke in and then we decide to let you stay. Who has some <laughs> nerve? If you're going to be up and cleaning my house, you don't have the right to judge me. <laughs> and they, they freaking, they're miners. They're mining in a cave. Right. What, what do you think they're doing? Fucking working at a spa? Like, of course they're going to be dirty. Of course I look like a trash bag. Did you see what I was living in? <laughs> I live in, like, squalor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Snow White uh, experiences life with the mystical mining dwarf creatures. And then, you know, they, you know, they do their routine every day and they're like, well, we'll see you when we get home, love, and bye-bye. And meanwhile, Snow White's still at home doing what, you know, every woman should be doing in the 1930s. Uh, you know, cleaning and singing. Yeah. Just whistle um, while you work. Sing while you work. Just work. <laughs> meanwhile, <sighs> being 14, she hasn't learned the phrase, uh, <laughs> don't talk to strangers. Let alone don't take candy apples from strangers. Because <laughs> we find out that the huntsman returned to the the queen. Oh, oh, that's what we forgot to mention, right? So the, the queen gives the huntsman a box and says, like, put her heart in this box so I know that you've killed her. And so the huntsman decides to let her go and puts a pig's heart inside of the box. And she goes up to her mirror and is like, <laughs> I got a heart. Now who's the cute one? <laughs> and the mirror's like, sorry, girl. That's a pig's heart. <laughs> <laughs> so she is livid. She is so mad. She's so mad. Because then <laughs> she goes down to her little dungeon and makes her own little potion. Decides to turn her, give herself a disguise. Uh, I don't understand the point of this disguise. <laughs> to look ugly. And like, the... Snow Snow White has never seen her before, right? Right. So why not just, yeah, like, dye so your like, hair blonde or something? You know what I mean? Like, why not? I guess because she's the queen, but she's already, as the queen, she's, like, 90% covered in the first place. Like, just go out in normal clothes. She won't recognize right. you. Right. She decides to turn into something that, like, I would never take something she's, from. That, you know? that she's, it's, it's everything she stands against. And she's like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> she's like, excuse me. Like, doesn't this defeat... The point of the movie? I thought this is isn't this understand. why you wanted to kill Snow White? So you like didn't turn into this? <laughs> she could have just put on a hat. Okay, so she goes into her dungeon, she makes a little potion to turn into this ugly old hag, and she makes a poisoned apple that will pull whoever eats it into a deep sleep called the sleeping death. And the curse can only be broken by love's first kiss. Wait, wait, wait. Let's talk about how the queen the queen shows up as this ugly old hag to Snow White in a window as like Snow White's doing the dishes and she's like dressed in this creepy like black shawl. She has like this big no like she just looks hideous and she's like, "Here to have an apple." <laughs> Snow White's like, "Okay, stranger in my window." <laughs> um, like, she... There's nothing wrong with that. Uh it is baffling. And you know what's funny? I think I think we can all agree. The window by your sink is one of the scariest places you can look at. Am I yeah. wrong? Am I like... No. Because it always like... looks out onto something. Or you see your own reflection and you scare yourself. Yeah. It's, that's just what happens. <laughs> like, have you ever done dishes at night? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever done dishes at night staring out that window? You're like, I swear to God, if something shows up... <laughs> I'm just going to close the blinds. I don't want to imagine look just like looking up to see this thing. And you're like, oh, okay. This Let me get the apple wow, from she's it. She's not even a person anymore. Wow. Wow. <laughs> she, not she's just selling ugly fruit. People. No big deal. <laughs> and like the apple, it like literally has like a skull on it. <laughs> <laughs> so to just do a quick run through from here from this point snow white falls into an eternal slumber the dwarves finally use all of that money that they've been storing up from that from those gem sales and buy her <laughs> the most expensive coffin i have ever seen uh, have you seen coffin prices they are not cheap coffins and funerals are not cheap people literally start gofundmes <laughs> 
to like fund a funeral? Why are they so expensive? Why are coffins so expensive? They're literally going underground. <laughs> they were like, she's too pretty to bury. And I'm just like, oh, you're just going to leave her on a on a mountaintop? She's not going to look that pretty for long if you think she's dead. <laughs> she's too pretty to bury, but too pretty to have an open casket. Let's get a glass one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just have an open casket, say goodbye, and then, like, you, you can't leave something that will decompose out in the sunlight that long. That's not how science works. <laughs> That's just not okay. Oh, and also, th- so the dwarves, the, dw- the dwarves, they see the queen leaving the cottage, and they chase her up a hill, and she tries to squish them <laughs> with a boulder. <laughs> but, like, lightning strikes the cliff. And like it causes the little land, like it's it's very convenient. It strikes the land she's like standing on, and she falls to her death. And she dies ugly, which is which is every it's everything she tried to avoid. She should have just dyed her hair. That would have been easier for her. Oh, also, okay. Can we talk about the scene where she drinks the potion to turn into the ugly hag, and she's like swirling around in darkness and there's like green swirls flying around her and she's like grabbing her throat that scene was so scary to me as a kid and her eyes literally roll up into the back of her head i'm like this is scary oh my god they go into like detail that transformation scene was uh first of all it's scary it is that scary. green. <laughs> it's like that this green is, This swirl. is actually where we start off. Yeah, oh well, because this is where we start with Disney villains theme mm-hmm. color. Do you know what I mean? That mm. lime green showcases across the board on so many Disney villains. Um, and it's just like that moment where you're like, oh, this is a bad person because that lime green has appeared. Uh, we see it with... Um, Ursula when she's doing her potions we see it with Scar when he's walking uh doing his be prepared segment also the um what is it who's Monsieur Monsieur Facilier Dr. Facilier what's his name the voodoo guy oh Dr. Facilier yeah Dr. Facilier when his friends on the other side yeah and we even see it in the next movie we're going to cover in in Sleeping Beauty um oh it's big in that one with Maleficent who is the most iconic lime green (laughs) literally that 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 moment, that mystical mist, that green mist that appears across the board in a lot of Disney films is just so it's mm-hmm. I think it brings a lot of people back to that moment with Snow White because that transition, that transformation into this like dark creature. And it wasn't even like a dark creature. Some people's grandmas look this way. And Dang, so <laughs> ugly people are dark creatures. Gio said it first. I mean, not my grandmother. My abuelita is the most beautiful woman in the entire world. <laughs> but it's just, it's true. It's, it's, we're, we're associating, we start associating this color with like the demons of the underworld and all these things. And, and I think that moment is just so, ugh. it's inspiring, but it's also like, it's scary. Yeah. It's also like ingrained in me. I literally forgot about her eyes rolling into the back of her head until right now we were talking about it. And I'm like, holy shit. I still remember that after all these years. It's such a like such a well done scene. It's just so good. It's just I just remember all the details. She's literally grabbing her neck like she can't breathe. And then her eyes, you can literally see the veins in her eyes. Her eyes roll up into the back of her head. I'm like, Jesus, what is going on here? And those are those little points of trauma that have affected us throughout our lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, it's stuck with me all these years. That's how that's how we know someone needs to use the safe word in the bedroom now. Um, so <laughs> So she dies, and they put her in a display case on the top of a mountain. Um, <laughs> display case. <laughs> she's a very expensive collectible figurine. She's not a yeah, toy. Like, Don't touch. <laughs> Snow White is the movie of first, sweetie. She's the movie of. She's the first <laughs> Disney collectible. <laughs> She's a very rare Funko Pop. They can only get at Comic Con, Gold Edition, and you can't take her out of the box. Could you imagine if Funko Pop had a had a dead Snow White? In a, oh my god, that would be kind of cute, like Snow White in the like in the glass coffin. I would actually buy that. I'm sure a lot of people would buy that. That would be cute. Fair, very fair, very true. Um, and so at the very end of the movie, we finally uh, re meet. Prince Florian, who is the the prince of this film, and he comes by after hearing about like this beautiful woman in a glass case, and decides, oh, I need to kiss her. That just that just really gets the guy going. Yeah, you know? I 
<laughs> his goal was just to kiss her. He didn't know this would break a spell. No one knew this would break a spell. Everyone thought she was dead. I just want to remind everyone. Everyone in this movie thought she was dead. Yeah, everyone thought she was dead. <laughs> oh, also, like, from the moment... Like, okay, so according to Wikipedia, from the moment that she falls asleep to the moment the prince arrives, a year has passed. And I'm like, how do they say that in the movie? Like, I don't remember. How do they know it's a year? How, how are we supposed to know it's a year? I, I don't even remember it's a year. I just know. They don't really say a lot of the things in the movie. I think a lot of us had to research afterwards. And then Disney's like, oh, by the way, this happened. <laughs> yeah, everyone had to add Disney on Twitter. Yeah. What, what's the real deal? Um, so at this point, a year later, she's 15 and he's 17. Ooh. Okay. Who was changing her catheter? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i want to know didn't anyone like <laughs> didn't someone see that happening and be like hey she's alive <laughs> i'm cleaning this <laughs> um oh poor poor snow white look i they don't i don't i guess they just did they figured like the glass case was enough to keep her from decomposing well it was because she i mean she wasn't dead <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't know that. Well, yeah, I mean, they but didn't no one like washed her or anything. She was just sitting in there for a year. If she's stagnant for a year, things collect dust. Things like <laughs> things like what did they like wash the body every like two, three days? Or <laughs> I something? mean, she was under a, a glass. You know, I don't know. I it's <laughs> not for me. Either way, the prince kisses her. She wakes up, uh, and they ride off into the sunset. Now. Here are things that we've learned as an adult. Yeah, don't kiss people who are sleeping without their consent. Don't kiss people who are sleeping, period. Yeah, and since you can't get consent from someone while they're sleeping, do not kiss people while they are sleeping. <laughs> yeah, we still got a long way to go, but <laughs> that is true. Like, okay, not not to defend the prince, but like... He and Snow did meet before, so she wasn't, like, a total stranger. I think they met once before. She was singing a song, and the prince, like, overhears her singing. She's doing the ah ha 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 thing, and then he comes over, and she's like, oh, you you know, you're singing so beautiful. He actually talks. But like, he actually talks in this movie. No, nah, girl, don't you remember that scene? He, he breaks into her yard. <laughs> he, like, hops a fence into her yard. Yeah, that's true. And it's like hitting on her while she's like trying to do her thing in the garden looking like a rag doll she freaks out and she runs away back to her tower and then he like just starts trying to get on her good side again and she's just like oh, oh thank you <laughs> well i mean her, her screaming and running away clearly means she's interested <laughs> <laughs> oh no i mean that's sad that's sad and unfortunate, but it's a reality that we have to accept. Um, yeah, he did a lot of things that like made a certain standard for for boys to look at and be like, "Oh, it's great. Women <laughs> love when I no. advance on them and <laughs> and keep trying to get at it." <laughs> this movie also really set the tone for like the whole damsel in distress yeah. stereotype, and you know, the princess needing to be saved by a man. You know, the princess is helpless and the prince will uh, someday a prince will come and save you and sweep you off your feet and solve all your problems. And you'll just marry him and live a happily ever. after. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that trope is, you know, sets the standard for a lot of Disney films, uh, as we're going to see <laughs> in our next one. Um, but for the most part, we recognize that like Snow White is an ever loving classic that we have to acknowledge was vital for the progression of animated films and for, you know, Disney moving forward. Obviously, there's a lot of tropes that don't fit into certain standards, oh, yeah. especially in 2022. <laughs> I want to also state that if you have Disney+, Plus, um, a lot of Disney films, old Disney films, are putting up a warning sign before their films. I've heard of that. I, mean, I don't have yeah. Disney+, Plus myself, but I've heard of like, warnings it's, like that. That warning, it just kind of... Uh, it kind of informs you that, like, hey, there's a lot of depictions in this film that are not acceptable in today's society. And we want you to recognize that. We recognize that. We're still going to let you watch it. We're not going to remove it. But you can check it out. And I I always... I'm a, I'm a big... I'm a big fan. I'm a big believer on allowing people 
to view certain film yeah. the way that they were made. Because in a historical context, if you remove that from a film, you're removing the bad part of history. And if you remove the bad part of history, you're kind of just erasing things that say, this never happened in our society. And when you erase that, it's it's so dangerous because then history has a way of repeating itself without people being like, oh, this never happened in history before. No, but it did happen before in history. <laughs> Men mm-hmm. were disgusting in history, and they're still <laughs> disgusting today. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Like, not just for movies, too, and just like textbooks, movies, literature, whatever. It's I think it's important to keep the more controversial pieces as a learning tool, as a guide of like what not to do, what not to repeat. You know, people always say history has a way of, of repeating itself. And I think it's important to look at history's past mistakes so we don't repeat ourselves and understand why it's wrong and, you know, have those tough conversations. If for say, if you're a parent watching a Disney movie with your kid and something wrong comes out, you know, have that conversation with your kid, use it as a teaching tool. You know, why is it bad? Why is it not acceptable today? Why was it acceptable then? Yeah. And most importantly, don't break into other people's houses. (laughs) Most importantly, for for me, most importantly would be don't kiss people when they're sleeping. (laughs) But don't break into people's houses. That's that's a close second. Yeah, wait, that that should go without saying don't be don't (laughs) don't be kissing someone while they're sleeping. No one likes that. No one needs that. That's 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 the worst. (laughs) Okay, all right. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this is the part of the show where we talk about little fun facts that we may or may not have found out about the film. Obviously, Snow White has been around for a millennia, so <laughs> it's hard to like surprise people with certain facts. But I do want to say certain facts that I found that I thought was rather interesting um, and a little scary at times. Adriana Casalotti. Casalotti? Casalotti. I don't know, is that Italian? It sounds Italian. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I think this was... This was before the time she was like, I got to change my name in Hollywood. (laughs) Um, So Adriana Casalotti, she was the first signed Disney princess. We praise her for that. She did wonderful things. When Disney signed her, they decided that they want to keep the world that they developed with each of these Disney films as real as possible. So Adriana Casalotti is not, she is not, credited in this film however when she signed the contract for snow white she basically signed over her voice to disney because from that point forward she wasn't allowed to act or sing in other works that weren't part of disney and even in disney she wasn't allowed to do anything that was not related to snow white i thought drag race contracts were strict oh no (laughs) this is a different time (laughs) honey this is a different time honey (laughs) she was she was basically blackballed from hollywood to do anything the only thing she was able to do was like a few voiceover things for like the wizard of oz um but even then she wasn't you know she wasn't she couldn't well, why, audition. Why would for the she Wizard sign that? Like, did Disney take a really good care of her afterwards? Like... No, because they only paid her at that time like nine hundred dollars. That's it. Considering how much money the movie made. I mean, adjusted for inflation, that's what. That's nothing. That's nothing. That can't be legal. Especially, I know that would not be legal now. No, that that that's no actually way. from that point forward. That's when Disney started to change their uh, had to change their contracts because she brought her and uh, the man who played Prince Florian had to like bring them to court and were like, hey, y'all are capitalizing off of this big and you're not letting us capitalize off of this as well. Um, so from that point forward, uh, Castellati had to be like just the voice for Snow White in everything. But she was always Snow White. She was never herself anymore. Oh, God. I- she lost, obviously, trying to to get the case to court because Disney was like, oh, sorry, you signed a contract. And I guess later that contract situation influenced, like, The Little Mermaid. (laughs) Just kidding. I don't know if that's true. I actually just, I assume that that would be true. (laughs) (laughs) Who knows? I mean, I just know there's no way that would fly in court now. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I do have another fun fact. So when this movie was coming out, a lot of people were telling Walt that it wasn't going to be successful, that he didn't know what he was doing, that it it wasn't going to make money. And he actually had to put his own house into mortgage 
just to finance this movie. And even then, towards the end of the movie, he had to get a loan of, I believe, $250,000 just to finish the movie. But, you know, while he believed in himself, he believed in his vision, and it all worked out in the end, and it paid off in the end. And even though everyone was telling him, no, it's not... It's not a good idea. It's not going to make money. Even his own brother and like his brother's wife, or I think Walt's wife were telling him like, no, it's not, it's not a good idea. He was like, you guys don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to put the house on mortgage and then we're going to finance this thing. And it worked. Mm -hmm. He did it. And now Snow White has influenced a variety of animated features. It's made uh, the American Film Institute's top lists of everything from villains to animation to just general movies. And on top of that, it's, you know, it's also influenced a lot of wonderful things at Disneyland parks around the world. Uh. <laughs> oh, my. Can we talk real quick about Snow White's Scary Adventures? Yes. So, I don't know. They, I don't know if they had it at Disney World, but in California, they had a ride. It's called Snow White's Scary Adventures, and it was scary it lived up to the name it was as scary as the movie and like so this ride when you first came out so it's one of those like little dark mm -hmm. rides and a dark ride doesn't mean it's like scary it means like it's literally you're in the dark going through like scenes in the movie you can find them at most amusement parks this dark ride when they first had it you're they you you ride the ride from the perspective of snow white so the cart you're in is supposed to be snow white and you're literally going through the movie and you're like going through the woods and those scary scenes and you're going through like the witch trying to give you the apple and the witch the queen turning into the evil witch and you're going through like all these scary scenes and when it first came out people like parents and kids were saying like this is scary and also people didn't realize why snow white wasn't in the ride and disney was like oh people <laughs> don't get that you're snow white and we were like, no, people didn't get that. So later, they actually changed it. Yes. They made the ride less scary, and they put Snow White in the ride, which I think makes sense, because a lot of people didn't get that you're doing it from Snow White's perspective. It, it was scary. <laughs> it was pretty that scary. That was great. It was a great ride. They had one at, uh, at the... Mm, they had one, I think, at Disney World. But I did hear that they changed the name and they changed the ride and like not not that long ago. I think it was like two years ago, they changed the name or something. Yeah, not that long ago. And it is wild because I I've seen YouTube videos of the the changes to the to the actual thing, and I remember like yeah, it's so different. It was now. just really dark and creepy. I I thought that was an interesting take on the Snow White look because, mm -hmm. you know, we do get a lot of Snow White that's just like calm and demure but the reality is it's like 60 percent of that movie is really dark and really creepy literally like half the movie most of the movie someone's trying to kill her yeah yeah <laughs> like, that's <laughs> like she's unaware yeah. of it like you know every 14 year old child is but <laughs> someone is trying to get her oh and in shanghai disney there's the what is it called the seven dwarves mine train the roller coaster right oh yeah which always has a long yeah. ass wait, and I don't understand. Yeah, why. it's a fun, cute ride, but I'm not waiting two hours. It for is. It. it is a. It's very annoying. Uh, but it is a very cute ride, and I was really glad that I experienced it. The, I, it's interesting to see it in Chinese, and it's also just a little bit dark. It's a little bit dark, not scary. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not a nightmare. No, it it is dark, but like I think I think that's the point because I think like some of the ride. No, no. It's a little dark, but it's very yeah. cute because it's mostly based off, like, the hi-ho scene. And I think a lot of the the ores, they're, like, neon and they're shining in the... Yeah. They're bright in the dark. They're, like, really, really neon colored in the dark. So I think it's supposed to be dark, but it's not, like, in a scary way. It's really well done. China would not be able to handle Snow White's scary adventures. They wouldn't... <laughs> they, nah. they would die. <laughs> People in Shanghai would just be like, this is insane. We can't do this. And then there'd be no line. And I'd be like, yeah, it's perfect. I can barely handle it. Uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, and there's also great things to see actually at Shanghai Disneyland related to Snow White. Because Snow White here in Shanghai is like the Disney princess of choice next to Elsa. Hmm. I wonder why. Well, the reason is it's not a secret. It's because, you know, Shanghai Disney is very clear that they wanted... Uh, authentically Disney, but distinctly Chinese. And obviously, like, instead of using, like, the Chinese princess <laughs> as, like, their go-to, <laughs> because I guess Mulan is too masculine, uh, they were like, oh, Snow White's perfect. <laughs> Snow White is, like, a perfect... <laughs> 
alternative. I, mean, I can also understand because I'm sure a lot of Chinese girls can relate to Snow White because of the pale skin and the black hair. So I'm like, you know, they can see themselves as Snow White. Really? Not Mulan? <laughs> well, they don't want to look up to Mulan. She's too masculine. Really? Like, she lied to get in the army. I mean... And it's, we, we'll, we'll cross that <laughs> we'll bridge we'll cover that to Mulan because we'll that, that is so good. Um, Cam, we did it. We covered Snow White. Way we did it. We okay for the fans, <laughs> all two of you. <laughs> <laughs> we said we were only gonna do thirty minute episodes. I think we have like two hours worth of stuff. We're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna trim the fat. I'm gonna trim the fat down to. I think we're going to get maybe 40 minutes. There's a, yeah, there's some good stuff. I'm, I'm not worried about the time. I, I, there's, I'm not putting a time limit on us. I mean, I'm worried about the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. You know, I'm worried like, about the time. I like to hear us talk. I'm sure other people like to hear us talk. They better. They have to now because they're all into it. Everyone's invested. <laughs> and since you enjoyed the show so much, why don't you follow our socials? We're on TikTok. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. And we're even... On Instagram, you can check out Your Bare Necessities with U-R-B-E-A-R throughout all the socials, actually. Um, and if you want to if you want to chit chat with us or recommend a movie that we should review, please feel free to do that on our Twitter or Instagram page. We would love to hear from you. Oh, and also uh, you can select our cocktail of the week each time we're going to do one of these episodes. I've just decided that Ooh, that's what we're doing now. I like that idea. That's a fun idea. Yeah. I think that would be a, a cute little uh, go-to drink to mix with some, make a drink for That's the fun. Disney princess we're reviewing. Ooh, yeah, even give us like a Disney drink and send us the recipe or something. That'd be fun. And we can have Sean make it. Sean, you're going to make it now. <laughs> Is he there? No. <laughs> Tell Sean. Sean, he's going to make the cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. That's Snow White. And that's it, our first episode. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for hearing us and listening to us. Next week, we're going to be covering Cinderella. And, of course, if you know anything about Cinderella, you'll know everything about Cinderella. I don't... <laughs> <You'll> know... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what else is it? It's a classic. Everyone knows Cinderella. It's also been done to death. If you don't know, go watch it. If you don't know, then why are you here? <laughs> All right, let's try an outro really quickly. I'm Cam. And I'm Gio, and we're your, your bare, bare necessities. necessities. Oh god, I gotta edit that again. That's gonna be. <laughs> Let's do it. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. Okay. I'm Cam. I'm Gio, and, and we're, we're your, your bare, bare necessities. necessities. That one sounded better. <laughs> <laughs> that one sounded better. Ooh, that's yeah. gonna be cute. It'll be fine. It'll be a cute outro.